Hi, it's Jesse again. I'm the owner of Blue Barrel Rainwater Catchment Systems. You can find all of our information and resources at BlueBarrelSystems.com. If you caught our last video, I went over how to build a gravity-fed drip irrigation system. This is our, our garden, and it's all fed by rainwater, gravity, um, and I wanted to give you a mid-season update. So our garden grew really well. Um, where did I, I sage some broccoli here. The problem with broccoli, it's all ready at the same time, so we harvested this about you know, a week ago. We had eight or nine heads, and it did really well. Um, uh, what I want to highlight though, we're in California, it's mid-July, and if you live in the West, you know we have a really long, hot, dry season. Um, so it's halfway through the irrigation season, and finally my rain barrels are near empty. So at this point, when the water's this low, we're really not getting a lot of output from our drip irrigation lines. Um, so what I want to show for you today is how we can refill these barrels so that we can keep using our gravity setup um, through the rest of the irrigation season. Um, I'll just say too, you know, a lot of folks here in California think it doesn't make sense to harvest rainwater because our, of our long dry season. And I'm trying to convince you the opposite. Here we are, we already got ourselves halfway through the season. Um, if that's all you get, that's great. You've taken a huge bite out of your water impact. Um, and you know, we could have caught a lot more. I have these four barrels back here. Um, we have about 20 in total collecting off of the roof of our 700 square foot bungalow. Um, the blue barrel rainwater catchment system is designed with these vent pieces. Um, they're screened and they ventilate the water, but they also have a hose thread on them so we can actually refill our tanks um, with regular old hose water just so that we can keep using all the equipment throughout the growing season. So, excuse me while I just walk over here and turn on the water. tighten that connection a little bit um, but if you follow me back over here you can actually feel it or hear it filling so it's kind of fun to listen to that almost as much fun as listening to them fill with rainwater originally so I'm just gonna let that run for a while and while we wait um, we are going to give you sort of an update on how our our gravity feed setup did. We did learn a couple things and I want to share those with you so that you can have a su successful experience as well. Um, so this is, the, our, these four barrels are irrigating these two garden beds. Um, we planted all kinds of vegetables and flowers here. We've already harvested a bunch and we're on to our second planting. Um, everything did pretty remarkably well. Let's see, um, we have a couple of, of, um, of herbs, perennial herbs that are irrigating there. Uh, broccoli is done, but it looks like cauliflower is just starting to head up. Here's a nice pretty baby cauliflower. That one's going to do great. We've got some Brussels. Um, but let me show you what we learned here. If you notice, at the far end here, our peas didn't do so well. Um, so they, you know, they were pretty dry. The ones we got were very, very sweet because they didn't get a lot of water, but we really didn't get a lot of output um, from our pea plant. So one lesson that's really important about gravity-fed irrigation is that if you're on a flat site, there's a limit to how far the water will travel. Um, my favorite thing to say is that this whole thing is more of an art than a science. Um, I think depending on which kind of brain you have, you may like to think of it more of a science than an art, but um, what I like to do is just play around, see what works, um, and then kind of make small adjustments as necessary. So what I learned here is that we're getting really good output sort of all the way through um, about here, but this last line that we laid down here really didn't get adequate output for um, the piece. So the, what I'm gonna do next year, I don't need to redo the whole thing, but I'm gonna be a little bit smarter about how I plant. I will plant um, something that requires less water farther from the source with the more water-loving plants closer to the source. So I'd say that's probably a really good general rule to remember. Um, if you're doing gravity feed is on a flat site, you're going to want your, the, your most water-loving plants closer to the source um, and plants that can tolerate a little less water towards the end. Um, now if we zoom in on this line again, and at BlueBarrelSystems.com we sell uh, drip irrigation kits just for gravity feed. We actually sell two kinds of kits. So this is our kit with the drip emitters, and the irrigation isn't on right now, so you can't actually see them working. Um, our last video really showed pretty well how they do that. Um, but these emitters are 
in the quarter inch line and they're spaced every nine inches. So it's regular spacing. And we recommend this style of irrigation kit for a vegetable garden. Um, but we do have another kind of drip kit with bubbler emitters and you actually punch your emitters um, custom individually. Um, so that can actually, that's another way to give you more control about which, which plants are getting um, more water. Um, so again, all these recommendations are really essential if you're on a flat site. Um, but if you have any slope at all working in your favor, you can overcome all the friction loss in the pipes and you're gonna get much better distribution naturally. But what I found just from playing around is that on a flat site, um, about 20 feet from your water source is the limit um, to where you can get decent output through emitters. So let's walk back over here and see how our fill is going. So we're starting to see the needle move and um, this is a good opportunity to talk about a really cool um, feature of the blue barrel system design. Um, am I gonna have to move that hose and fill every barrel individually? The answer is no, because all of the barrels are plumbed together underneath. Um, our under plumb design is what really sets us apart. It's probably the most functional rainwater catchment system on the market. You see the whole system is actually draining from here below the base of the barrels. You know, a typical rain barrel is gonna have a spout right about there, and then how are you gonna access the water that's in this bottom six inches of the barrel? So um, we have found, um, we, you know, we really um, find this design works really well. Um, and then in addition, what's going on, you only need one inlet on the whole system. So if you've Googled around to try to find designs for how to make a multi-barrel system, you're gonna find a lot of people are plumbing one to the next from the top. That will work, but you're setting yourself up so that one barrel has to fill and then overflow into the next. With this design, all the water that's going in is flooding this bottom pipe, and then all four of these barrels are actually filling in unison. So that's why it actually seems pretty slow, the way this needle's moving, is because we're not just filling this one barrel, we're filling four times that. So, um, and I didn't want to turn the water on too high because I would get a lot of leakage if I did and I may need to go turn that down a little bit because I see some dripping. So, um, so I just kind of time it, I get a sense it'll probably take a good 20 minutes to fill all four of these barrels, um, but then I'll have really good head pressure again for um, irrigating for, and at this rate, you know, I do expect um, this fill to last about a month and a half. So, um, we will check in again when the barrels are full and watch for our next video, but it's been great to chat today. Thanks.